Welcome to Lunatic Froggy. Today we're going to discuss autism. We're going to react to the Gemma Grace Journey's autism video, What is Autism? And then we're also going to add in um, what ADHD is and how there's similarities between ADHD and autism. Not to take away from autism, but for the people that don't know that autism and ADHD do have a lot of similarities, but there are differences, and I will show those. So, let's get on to the show. Channel, I hope you're all doing well today, across the world, wherever you may be. Gemma. And today's video is going to be a requested topic by one of my lovely viewers. They asked about, can I do a video about what is autism? So I thought I would do a in-depth... Now, the reason I chose this video is because... There are a lot of people who suffer with autism, and they suffer with ADHD, and this way we get to know what is autism. All right. Video explaining it a little bit better. I have done a previous video about autism before and what it is and what to look out for, but this is going to be an updated, fresh video for those of you who are new to my channel, who have recently subscribed, and this is what autism is, so I hope... Her link will be posted, so make sure you go smash the subscribe button on her channel. Um, she's really amazing. You learn something about autism, and I hope this is helpful to you. So let's get into the video. So what is autism, I've been asked. Autism is a lifelong developmental disability which affects how people communicate and interact with the world and people around them. In the UK, more than one in every 100 people are on the autism spectrum and there are around 700,000 adults and children in the UK. I'll get the US statistics, but I think it's one in 36 children and adults have autism in the US. Autism is a spectrum condition and affects people differently. Autistic people have difficulties with both verbal and nonverbal language. Um, they also have sensory disorders, which she'll probably explain. Um, as far as verbal and nonverbal, for some people who don't understand what that is, is basically their brain shuts down and they can't speak. Such as gestures, tone of voice, and understanding sarcasm. Social interaction. We have difficulty recognising or understanding others' feelings and intentions and expressing our own emotions. It can make it difficult to understand the social world around us. This could look like us being insensitive, seeking time out when overloaded, not seeking comfort from others, appear to behave strangely or inappropriately, and find it hard to form friendships. Also, we are very... Oh, because we... I shouldn't say we... I haven't been diagnosed... But because people with autism have such a hard time developing friendships because of it, the people that, uh, there are people out there that will abuse them and make it so, um, they think that you're, they're your friend, but in reality, all they want to do is use you for your money and to get stuff out of you. We often might have repetitive or restrictive behaviors. Or um, not all autistic people have repetitive like behaviors, but um, rocking back and forth is a major one. Um, playing with your fingers constantly, uh, rubbing on something, bouncing your leg, um, playing with your fingernails, playing with your hair. Those are all repetitive things that when you're in a higher stress situation, you're going to do it. Now, my little brother who has Asperger's syndrome, he, um, will constantly constantly bounce 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 like he will bounce his head off the uh bed while he's sleeping 
Autistic people may repeat movements such as hand flapping, rocking backs and forwards, or the repetitive use of an object such as flicking a pen, clicking their fingers, or opening and closing a door. Autistic individuals do this to help calm or self-soothe themselves when they feel stressed or over-anxious. We also may be over or undersensitized to light, sound, taste, touch, temperatures or pain. We have highly focused interests and hobbies that start from a young age and can be lifelong or short term. Okay, so let's get into what she just said there. As we all know, this is an informative video. Um, the light, if it's too light, uh, they get a headache, their eyes hurt, um, you'll see them wear, like, sunglasses in stores and stuff, and a lot of people do it either A, because of sensitivity to light, or B, because they're, they get headaches, um, touch, if it, uh, let's take me for an instance, if it's slimy, I don't like touching it, if it's, um, I can't stand socks on my feet because of the feeling of them, uh, taste, again, <laughs> we're going with that slimy because, ugh, but, um, which is a texture, it's a texture and a taste thing. I don't like barbecue sauce because of the way it tastes. Um, there's a list of things that I won't eat because of the way it tastes or the texture of it. Fish is one of them. Um, so, when you see somebody and they're like being nitpicky, don't just think that they grew up being nitpicky because I used to eat duck with my grandpa. I used to eat quail, venison. I mean, there's a long list of things that I used to eat. And, er, yeah, that I used to eat, or I at least tried once that I will not eat no more because of taste, texture, all of that stuff. Um, so, it can progress to get worse, or it can go away with rehabilitation. So I hope that has given you a little bit in depth about what autism is from my perspective. And this information I've got from the National Autistic Society, which is the UK's national autism charity. I will link their website down below and I will link the information so you can- I will copy Gemma and link that. You can go and read it for yourselves if you wish to find out more about autism. But my autism is high functioning. I was diagnosed in 2014 at the age of 25. My autism affects me differently. So for me, I'm more sen I do want to say that more and more people are getting diagnosed with autism at a later age because of the simple fact that we were growing up in a society that we were not allowed to talk about autism. Uh, uh, if we were acting strange or whatever, we were told to get over it and we hoped we masked it so we didn't get in trouble it's due to high-pitched noises so things like ambulances police sirens buses uh, motorbikes anything that has a high-pitched noise or a high-pitched squeal noise I, it kind of really irritates me makes me feel anxious i'm sensitive to sound i'm sensitive to touch so it depends if you touch me with a firm touch or a light touch my body feels like it's got electric shocks going through it a lot of the time I have problems with my eye contact, you can probably tell. I tend to look down my notes and then glance back up at the screen because I like to keep... Again, Gemma, look above the camera, but I understand. ...on track with the topic and make sure I have relevant things to say. Eye contact is also very difficult for me because I feel that I'm having to constantly stare at you and go into a person's privacy and into their own personal boundary. So again, that can cause problems for me with regards to making friends and talking. I used to do that. I probably still do that. When I'm talking to people, I'll close my eyes. Um, I've actually gotten made fun of it. This is how I know I do it. Because like when I'm 
talking to somebody face to face, I tend to look down or I close my eyes. I'll look at you for about two seconds and then I'm closing my eyes. To people because they may feel I don't care or I'm rude or antisocial when it's not the case at all. Eye contact just mentally and physically drains me to the point where I have to just disappear and look after myself. I also may have inappropriate body language because my body language doesn't often convey what I'm trying to say. I may look one way and be saying something and then you might read me and think, oh, well, Gemma's is saying something completely different to me. So again, I'm not regular with my body language or interacting in large groups of people. I don't, I get overstimulated in large groups of people. I'm very anxious when it goes to traveling, to events or to see other people. I have to plan how I'm going to get there, how I'm going to get back. How long am I going to be there? Is it going to be food there that I like? If I'm going out to a food venue? I would always make sure I eat ahead of time just so that way you can nitpick and then you're not starving the whole event. Or if I'm going out to a relative's house, I have to make sure they know what I like to eat and what I like to drink. So at least I know I don't have to particularly worry about going out to my friends or family's houses because they do tend to know what I like and what I dislike. Um... Being insensitive, yes, or being strange. I've been called that over the years because people think, oh, Gemma's just a bit, you know, different, and she might be a bit insensitive. She may say the wrong thing at the wrong time. It's not intentional. It's just the fact that my brain has so much going on, and I struggle to co comprehend what I'm trying to say. Friendships, yes. This is a big area for me. Friendships is something that I struggle with over the years. I've always struggled to keep a friend. I've always struggled. That's because they don't understand you, Gemma, and anybody that decides to leave you don't deserve you. To keep, uh, maintain a long friendship at the moment. I am doing well. Me and my best friend have been best friends for nearly nine years, so I managed to keep her, maintain the relationship and the boundaries very well. We help each other out. She also has mental health issues, and she understands me. I understand her. And we A lot of people who have mental health is a mental health disorders not issues disorders are more prone to hang out with people who have like or similar disorders we try and support each other through our mental health difficulties and we try our best to support one another by giving each other space and we try to help out by meeting up at least once to twice a week and we go out and do things with each other so friendships have been really difficult because it's something i've had to learn to do I've had to learn personal boundaries, I've had to learn how to communicate with her, she's had to learn how to communicate with me, and it's kind of become an ongoing thing with us. Over or sensitivity to light, sound, touch or taste? Yes, not so much with light, light doesn't really bother me that much. Light bothers the fuck out of me, I hate it. But sounds and taste, yes. Sounds to me, like I said at the beginning of this video, I'm very insensitive to sounds a lot, a lot of high-pitched noise i can't do it just really aggravates me taste i don't really like things that are sour or bitter um or things that have a bit of spice to them especially spicy food i don't really like because it's like that gag reflex starts kicking in but i'm quite good with a lot of foods i'm quite good with a lot of touch you're lucky on that one like i'm not good with food I don't eat fish because of the texture. It makes me throw up for hours. Um, again, anything slimy. I'm not good with spicy. I'm not good with sour. Like, mildly sour I can handle, but anything after that, nope. So, I mean, literally, I get you. Um, sometimes we just have to be picky. So she puts firm touch if someone's giving me a hug or a kind of like a pressure hug. I'm like, oh, and I really like it and it really makes me feel good. Um, temperatures, yes, I'm very sensitive to temperatures because I can go from being really hot and being okay and then being really cold. It's like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like hot or cold. I like uh, medium. And I can get really sensitive with the pain and discomfort of that temperature. Or if I feel ill, I'm very emotional when it comes to pain. I don't deal well with pain at all. I'm very sensitive to my pain threshold. I have a very, very low pain threshold. I'm very getting upset easy when I get ill. And right there, I want to add in that some people have a higher pain tolerance. Um, and some people have a lower... Uh, just because you have a high paid tolerance does not mean 
that you don't have autism and just because you have a low tolerance mean it does not mean that you have autism it just means that everybody is different but it's more heightened in people with autism or well, like, like recently he had the world situation issue right i had the c word which i'm not going to say because youtube doesn't like it but yeah basically i had the c word and it made me feel really knackered tired exhausted mentally drained i just felt really not hungry i lost my appetite i felt really weak and just crappy and my my tolerance would be talking to people or being online was a very very low tolerance i just couldn't do it i felt absolutely drained empty lost kind of yeah so i was very very uh very oversensitive to that and um, we have highly focused interests yes i do have highly focused interests i am somebody who has passionate interests about politics or elvis presley or star wars or anything to do with movies i am very passionate about that kind of genre of films and music i do love to see i'm different i i love researching but i lose focus so quick on things and this is where my adhd comes in where like i'll be doing something and i'll lose focus or interest and then i'll go back to it um i'm trying to change that about elvis presley i have a lot of elvis presley collections as you've seen i've done multiple videos and live streams showing my elvis collectibles over the time that i've got them i'm also very passionate about music and films I'm also very passionate about reading books. I don't tend to talk about the books that I read, but I do have a lot of autobiography books that I've read of different celebrities over the years. Um, so yeah, my life, life, my lifelong interests have been started from a quite young age. I've been passionate in politics since I was about 10, 11 years old, from seeing the news about David Cameron and the other prime ministers that we've had, Gordon Brown, etc. And I've always been like, oh, I want to have, have my voice heard and I want to get interested in it and I research everything I need to know about it. And I don't stop digging until I find out how to get involved. And I did a lot of political work with my former Conservative MP, Ben Gummer, before he left Ipswich. I was very, very involved with him. I did a lot of political work with regards to disability, autism, and making my town more accessible for people who have disabilities. Not just autism, but mental, physical disabilities. And I raised a profile to make sure that disabled people were involved in the local political scene. And I got involved with that thanks to my late friend Matthew, who unfortunately uh, lost his life a few years ago. But if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't have got involved as heavily as I did in the political circle and in the political community. I do a lot of disabled advocacy and I work with other autism charities, disability charities, who have been supportive of me over the last few years since I've got into the advocacy campaign. So that has become a lifelong interest for me and a lifelong passion to raise the awareness. Right now we're just letting Gemma talk so that way you can learn more about her. Autism and acceptance of it. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, share and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Okay, so that is Gemma Grace. So that's Gemma. Um, now I'm going to go into, like, what, I'm going to go on to some websites. I'll show you the websites. You can read them for yourself. We'll go through them. I'll show you what autism is, what ADHD is, and how they correlate. Okay, signs and symptoms of autism spectrum disorder. Autism spectrum disorder is a de development disability, which you learned. Um, people with ASD have social, I mean, this is all saying what she's saying. Some of the signs avoids or does not keep eye contact, does not respond to name by nine months of age, does not show facial expressions. This is mainly for kids, but, I mean, you can ask your parents if you had them. Um, do not play simple interactive games like Pet a Cake by 12 months. Use few or non-gestures by 12 months. Does not share interests with others by 15 months. Does not point to show you something interesting by 18 months. Does not notice what 
when others are hurt or upset by 24 months, does not notice other children and join them in play by three years. I'm not saying 36 months for three years. Um, does not pretend to be something else like a teacher or a superhero by the age of four. Repetitive behaviors and interests, um, lines up toys and other objects and gets upset when order is changed, repeats word or phrases, or phrases over and over. Um, my son does that. <laughs> he did that a lot. Uh, I think it was shank. He was shanking everything. Um... Plays with toys the same way every time. Is focused on parts of objects. For example, wheels. Gets upset by minor changes. Has obsessive interests. Must follow certain routines. Flaps hands. Rocks body. Or spins self in circles. Has unusual reaction to the way things sound, smell, taste, look, or feel. Other characteristics, uh, delayed language, movement skills, cognitive or learning, hyperactive, impulsive, or in inattentive behavior, epilepsy and seizure disorders, unusual eating or sleeping habits, gastro issues, um, unusual mood or emotional reactions, anxiety, stress, or an excessive worry, lack of fear, or more fear than expected. Now, this is like ki kids. And that was my son. And this is autism spectrum disorder. I will pull up for the adults. Give me a second. Okay. This is autism speak. Signs of autism in adults. Um, one in 45 adults in the U.S. are diagnosed with autism. Okay, I was a little off. Um, common characteristics of adults, uh, autistic adults. Um, social interactions, feeling awkward, having difficult understanding what others are thinking or feeling, prefer to be left alone, Difficult making friends, having difficult understanding social rules. Don't have to call me out. Verbal and nonverbal communication, difficult making eye contact, responding to conversations in a blunt way, talking things literally, um, repetitive or restrictive behaviors, having the same routine every day, noticing small details and patterns that peers want, having very intense and specific interests. Um, masking in adults. And this is what a lot of people don't understand. And I said this before. When you're younger and you're, kid, you're not really um, allowed to be who you are, you learn how to mask them the signs you learn how to make sure that people think you are the way you are and it takes a lot of patience many autistic adults choose to mask or camouflage their autism symptoms research shows that autistic people may engage in masking because they want to fit in be accepted or and avoid drawing attention to themselves in situation, uh, social situations. Others resort to masking as a means to avoid bullying, maintaining friendships, and succeed at work and school. It is possible to mask your autism without even realizing it. For some people, masking looks like adopting more subtle stemming behaviors, like using fidget st spinners instead of flapping hands. Some uh, might adapt to a whole different persona, imitating the speech and body language of others during social interactions. 
Some force themselves to make eye contact and be more expressive with their facial expressions, even if doing so feels uncomfortable or natu unnatural. While masking helps some ad autistic adults navigate social situations, jobs, and relationships, research shows it can help it can have negative effects on the mental health. Some people find masking draining or exhausting, while others report feeling isolated mis and misunderstood as a result of their efforts to mask their autism. Because nobody... And... I want to point out that this goes hard with a lot of people. Because most people who are autistic, they don't fit in at work and or working is really hard for them. So let's say you take somebody like my daughter who is, I fully believe she's on the spectrum. She's waiting to get tested as of right now, but it's a three-year wait. S sorry, people. I can't give you a definite answer right now. But when she goes to work, she tries to fit in. And by the time she gets home, she's mentally exhausted. Which then cause panic attacks. She'll end up having panic attacks at work. She'll end up having panic, attack panic attacks at home. She feels isolated, like nobody likes her. She feels like she's unwanted, which causes more stress-induced panic attacks. It causes stress. And it's just a ever-ending chain. There are some people who cannot mask enough at work or school to get through a whole week. Now, does that make them a bad person? No. Does that make them lazy? No. What that means is that they have to find a way because just coping with it ain't going to help. They have to find a way to deflate. You do not get time and everybody says, well, you get lunch time. You get 30 minutes. 30 minutes is not enough time to deflate. And what I'm talking about is, let's take a beach ball. When you get a beach ball, it's flat. Right? Flat. There's no air in it. That is where you are when you're at home. You're safe. Nobody's there to judge you. You go to a social event. The longer you're at this social event, the more air is put into this beach ball. Then you have the ride home with traffic and lights and more air added. Now, you add in... I got to eat. I got to take a shower. I got to do this. I got to do that. That pressure is just more at air added into it. Sooner or later, you need to decompress back to a flat basis. But some people who are more stressed, more anxious, more just all over the place they cannot deflate if they have to work seven or five days a week especially five days straight what it is is they get halfway decompressed and they have to wake up well now starts the morning routine i gotta brush my hair i gotta take a shower i gotta do eat i gotta do x y z before I could even get to work. So we already added a bunch of air just off of the morning um, routine. Then 
we got a whole day of work where we have to mask to try and fit in, which is causing anxiety attacks and social anxiety and all of that. And again, our, by the time we get there, home, our ball is damn near a rupturing with air. We've almost overfilled it. Now, anyways, you take and you decompress to halfway. By that third day or fourth day, you're to the point you can't handle life in its situation. So what do you do then? You again decompress. You have to take a whole weekend just to decompress to do it all over again. But sometimes it let's say there's emergency situations, there's all these things throughout the week that weekend that you're supposed to do. You can't decompress fully so you could go handle a week at work. And that is a very big thing of autism. Now, let's get into ADHD. Okay, so ADHD, Attention De Deficient Hyper Disorder, ADHD. Over, we're going to look at symptoms. Okay, so symptoms of ADHD are inattentiveness, difficult concentrating and focusing on things, hyperactivity and impulsive. Those are the two main things, but the intense intentiveness is having a short attention span and being easily distracted, making careless mistakes, example, in schoolwork, or cl your chores, appearing forgetful or losing things. Fuck. <laughs> Stop calling me out, people. Appearing, being unable to stick to tasks that are tedious or time-consuming, like doing chores. Constantly changing activities or ca tasks. Having difficulty organizing tasks. Hyperactive and impulsiveness is being unable to sit still, especially in calm, quiet surroundings. Constantly fidgeting, being unable to concentrate on tasks. Excessive physical movement, excessive talking, being unable to wait their turn, acting without thinking, inter interrupting conversations, little to no sense of danger. Um, now, if we go into related conditions in children and teenagers with ADHD, you got anxiety, you got optional defiancy disorder, which is, uh, this is a defined by negative and disruptive behavior, particularly towards authority figures, such as parents and teachers. Conduct disorder, this is often involves a tendency towards highly antisocial behavior, such as stealing, fighting, vandalism, and harming people or animals. Depression, sleepy problems, autistic spectrum disorder. Um, that's dyspraxia. I don't know how to say that. Y'all can say a condition that affects physical core or ordination, coordination. Why did they put it that way? Epilepsy, Tourette syndrome, and learning to difficulties such as dyslexia symptoms in adults. Again, carelessness or lack of attention, constantly starting new tasks before finishing the old ones, poor organizing skills, inability to focus or prioritize, constant losing, losing or misplacing things, forgetfulness, break. Restlessness and eagerness, difficult keeping quiet and speaking out of turn, blurting out responses and often interrupting others, mood swings, irritability, and quick temper, inability to deal with stress, extreme impatience, task risks in activities, often with little or no regard to, 
for personal safety and the safeties of others. AKA driving. Um, again, it goes into related conditions in adults is personality disorder, bipolar, and obsessive compulsive disorder. Now, if we go into ADHD and autism, the crucial uh, similarities and differences, this is by ABA Centers of America. Um, understanding autism, we already did that. Exploring ADHD, we already did that. Shared symptoms and overlapping features of ADHD and autism. Impaired social skills, which, as you've learned, it makes it hard to, like, talk to people. In inattention and distractibility. Attention difficulty. Difficulties of the hallmark feature of ADHD. However, individuals with ASD may also struggle maintaining attention, particularly in situations not aligned with their restrictive interests or inner focus. Hyperactivity and restlessness. Well, that's both of them. In autism, they call it stimming. In ADHD, they call it fidgeting. Same shit, different day. Excessive function challenging. Either way, you're forgetting to do something. You forget you can't. Some can't organize. Some can organize. It's a whole thing. But now we go into the differenting features, which is social communication and interactions. Now, this is on both of them. Because... Social reciprocators, <laughs> I don't know that word, are more central to AD ASD, while individuals with ADHD may exhibit impaired social skills. These challenges are typically, typically secondary to attention ex and excessive functions rather than core dis deficits. Restrictive interest and repetitive behavior. Yes, repetitive behaviors are a core feature of ASD, whereas they're not a defining character of ADHD. These behaviors can manifest as intense preoccupation with Specific topics, routine ADH adherence, adherence, sorry, ADHD, <laughs> messed up my words, hee <laughs> hee, routine adherence or sensory sensitivities. Individuals with ADHD may jump back and forth from various topics during conversations or daily activities. Hee <laughs> hee, me, con, con Cognitive profile. Individuals with ASD often demonstrate unique cognitive profiles, including exceptional attention to details, visual s battle skills, and pattern recognitions. There is where conceptive of savings come from. Individuals on the spectrum who exhibit extraordinary abilities in cognitive individuals with ADHD show more generalized con cogn cognitive difficulties particularly fuck in sustained attention and work memory. Tanya cannot speak today. Sorry. Treatment go to your Basically, it's going to say go to your um, doctor. But ABA Centers of America does the similarities. So, that is ADHD, ADD, or ADHD and autism. How it correlates, how it doesn't correlate, and 
of course, we had to react to the Gemma. Now, I will be reacting to more videos from Gemma. And maybe, just maybe, I'll talk about the, the full, like, decompression. So, I love you all, and I hope you had an amazing time. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Hope you have an amazing day. Love you all. Bye! <laughs>